All right, so not about uh, – this is a second fight in a row where I don't have a lot of information on either fighter. Uh, that makes two of us. Yeah, it's, it's going to kind of be <laughs> a coin toss in the air to see this one. So I'm, I'm excited to see what these guys bring to the cage. You know, the fights are always going to be great because Ricky does – 90% of the matchmaking on these cards. Oh, yeah, dude. R Ricky's a matchmaking guy. I've never... So, I, uh, I, you know, obviously, they'll send me the, the lineups for these fights. And, of course, to do my job, I got to do notes and all that stuff. But then I'll just be watching it from a fan's perspective, and it's like, oh, my God. These guys know how to matchmake fights. Oh, for instance, absolutely. One that's coming up that I'm really excited for, not to take anything away from this fight, is Matt Valencia fighting later on. Uh, it, uh, just fantastic. It's, it's going to be a great night of fights. We have a John, John Lohr, excuse me, Alte Denard's teammate over at, uh, at Coulter. I believe that's the way to pronounce that. Col it should maybe Coulter, I don't know. It's one of those uh, weird, you know, where they take letters out of a out of a word. But I'm just going to call it Coulter. That whole gym is very smooth. Now making his way to the red corner, Eric Patson Cox. All right. But, yeah, that, that entire gym, man, very supportive of each other. I was watching during weigh-ins. They stick together. They stay together as a unit. They're always taking Instagram photos for each other, hyping each other up, helping each other train. So they're, they're a very close gym. And I think just the – even though if you look at a guy like Alate Denard, you know, the, the positivity that he brings, you can't help but feel like that's part of his gym's influence on him. Absolutely. The gyms really, really do set the tone, especially for these younger fighters. And I think that – you know, with with MMA being where it is in the world today and where it's going, um, it's just really incredible to see these younger fighters have this opportunity to come out here and just train with top-level teams and top-level teammates all across the country. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, you got Glory, you got, who do you want to go to? You know, Korean Tiger, you got Underdog. I mean, all these, I, I know there's one guy from American Top Team Fight Lab in New Jersey. I mean, all of these, all of these gyms are just so high level and accredited, and you know, it shows. Like it, these guys did not come here to mess around. They're not, you know, showing up out of shape. These guys come here to fight, and their teams come with them, and it's a, it's a family type environment. That's the biggest thing for me about combat sports, is that yeah, it's an individualistic sport. So when you get in there, you're throwing, you know, it's, it's you and your opponent. You're throwing leather, but it's all about the teams. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is a kickboxing bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds. The referee in charge of the action, Chris Romulo. First, introducing and fighting under the blue corner, he stands at five foot eight inches tall, weighing at 136 pounds. Under Culture Flight Club, representing Jersey City, John John Lee Lord. And his opponent, standing and fighting out of the red corner, stands at five foot five inches tall, weighing at 135 pounds. Under Senshi Tori MMA. Out of North Bergen by way of Guatemala, Eric Cutter Betty Cox. All righty, second fight of the evening here. And we are ready to go, folks. Very talented Steve Mason in the cage. We Great got his here. job. 135 pounds at this matchup. Yep. Wasting nice no time. Nice by Lore. Okay. Awesome. Man. But Patson Cox is not letting him kind of, I mean, he's doing a great job of mounting his own, deep, uh, excuse me, offense here. Kind of blitzing in, too, using feints and then blitzing in quickly and trying to get out. Lauren definitely has, uh, I feel like the, the, the heavier hands out of the two of them. But you notice when uh, Patson Cox fires, it is much more fast than powerful. So really, it, this could be this could end up being a case of you know speed versus power. Also in stature, I mean, Lore is just got the, the height advantage a little bit there. So you think that you have to use that, and uh, and Patson Cox would have to try to make his way in there using feints, which is exactly what he's doing to his credit. Nice dodge, nice slip. Yeah, these two are standing in the phone booth and just going at it. Exactly. I, I figured that would happen. I figured it would <laughs> as much would be the case because. Right before we got uh, ready to go here, Moore was, was pumped up, man. He was screaming. Yeah, nice leg kick. Yeah, Patson Cox is oh, definitely relying more. There. Oof. Nice one, too. 
Patton Cox is definitely relying more on his boxing, whereas Lore is just trying to find those power shots. And it is the the bane of a, of a shorter fighter's existence in a fight is how to manage that range and get in without getting injured. Yeah, which makes it so incredible, like the, the some of the top, top fighters from the UFC with um, Henry Cejudo and Alexander Volkanovsky, the oh, little absolutely. guys that are just crushing it. Yes. But having to get in and beat that reach advantage. Right, and then how do you do that, though? You do that with speed, you do that with feints, you do that with technical defense, and we've seen that from Patson Cox. He's done a fantastic job so far. Another one of those where I don't even know how to score that round. Ladies and gentlemen, please, you're encouraged to take photographs, take video, all that you want, but please make sure the flashes are off. It's distracting to the fighters. No flashes, please. Oh! <laughs> you just keep serving up heat. I love this, Mickey. <laughs> I love it. I tell you, I used to do a lot of DJing, and then I decided that I was only going to DJ in places where I could play the music I wanted to play. Right, and as you're commentating fights as well. Yeah, just, yeah. Just give yourself more of a challenge, <laughs> yes. right? I used to run the lights too. That was too much. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have ADD, so my brain would be, like, fried by the end of the night, man. I think a lot of red corner fighters got blue lights. <laughs> yeah. All righty, beginning of round two. Did, did you you have an idea of who might have took round one? or? I'm going to say that our friend Eric might have, be, uh, might have an edge him out there in round yeah. one. He was just so active. And credit to him, man, doing that against a taller fighter. And you know what? When when Lord lands, though, you could see the difference. You know, like you could see when yeah. when Pat Cox he lands. It's like all right, yeah. There's the, he, he'll fire off like a five shot combination, and you know it, it'll send <laughs> Lord back a little bit, but then Lord will land like a one two, and Cox goes flying. You know what I mean? It's right there. Yeah, look at him though. Laura is definitely the bigger of the two of them. Right, 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 right. Which is, you know, it's why it's important that uh, that Patson Cox uses this, this this fainting kind of boxing style and doesn't allow him to set his t set his tone or set his pace. And it is Laura that at least this round's been backing him up, and putting the pressure on him. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if listen, if Laura wants to win this, he just gotta, in my personal opinion, get him up a cage. He could fire off knees and. In my personal opinion, Patrick Cox just got to keep doing what he's doing, man. He's been great at kind of just outworking Lore. I don't know if Lore is looking for the fight-ending shot, but Patrick Cox, he's just been great at finding those small little openings and category, you know, capitalizing on them. I think the, the right side of Lore's ribs start, starting to show a little bit of redness from those body kicks. Oh, yeah. That, that landing. Oh, he's been finding a home for that. But you know what, also? <laughs> oh. Patrick Cox has been kind of... Uh, he, he's been he's been wearing the shots in his face too, and he's starting to get slowly more and more backed up. Laura's starting to impose his will more so on uh, on Patsman now. So you will notice that in this fight, the fighters are not wearing headgear. They're still wearing shin pads, but no headgear. Right, and I talked to Matt Valencia about that the other day, and he said, it, it, I think it's after a certain, oh my God. Oh, he's gonna call a standing count. Were they reset? Yeah, the standing count, okay. Interesting, yeah. He, we might see a finish here soon. He's all good. He's. But the, you're you're absolutely you're absolutely right. Those. Uh, I mean, listen. Khan's been doing a great job with his leg kicks, but <laughs> Lore's what Lore's been doing in the body, the energy that he's been transmitting, and the, the, the damage to to Cox's body has been multiplying and multiplying and multiplying over the course of this fight. He's starting to get tired, man. And it's also when you have the taller guy leaning on top of you and firing on you, and especially dude, if you're on the uh, the back foot the entirety of the fight, that's got to be oh, exhausting. Yeah, with Patson having you know being the shorter fighter, having the shorter reach, you know every time he came in, granted he was coming in with mu like multi punch combinations, but he would just get rocked. Yes. But you know what? In between rounds, this might be a good chance to kind of hey, head, let's hit the reset button, right? You've made it to the end of the round. Let's come out solid in the third, and let's not let this guy uh, impose his will like he's been doing. Because, I mean, I got it one and one right now, personally. Yeah, I would agree with that. One and one works. So very contingent on this third round here. And you know what? Listen, for as much as we're saying about Cox, but Laura, Laura has been, uh, you can see him, he's breathing heavy. So 
I think this is going to come down to who just who wants it more. Lewis is he had he's had this intense stare in his eyes all night. He's like locked in on his target. Very intense, yes. But you know what? A very nice guy. I believe it. Of course, when he's on the cage. Wouldn't want to see him in a cage. Wouldn't want to see any of these guys in a cage. All righty, third and final round here. Who is going to take it? I wish we had what the UFC has with Twitter, where we could see what people are tweeting about the fight. We could get an unofficial scorecard. You know what's really cool about the UFC is they're partnering with the Meta, or Meta and they're going to offer a 180-degree virtual reality experience. So I feel like it's going to be like you're sitting cage side. So I could see Usman knockout coming to the first time in uh, complete exactly. 180. Nice. Or see Usman get knocked out by Leonard. Oh my God, man, that was a, quite the knockout. And I got to get listen. Guys came out and he said, "I'm ready to go." He's been a much more active fighter, and I mean, I know we're only a short time into the third round. We don't have a, a round counter here, but I, I'm giving this one early to Patman Cox. Yeah, I would say so. He's landed probably about 20 or 30 punches and kicks so far. We're only about 45 seconds into the round. He's also just got to be a little bit careful because Ooh. for right, that right there. Yep. He'll fall into shots, so you'll see he'll he'll fire off a one-two, and Lore's just waiting to capitalize on that. He kind of leaves his head open, and he'll fall into things. So he's got to be careful of that. Oh, that it's was oh. wrong. If I didn't say so, much, if I didn't know much better, I think Lore just got a little bit rocked. A little bit stunned, a little bit dazed. Oh, the fatigue definitely playing a factor in this fight. Absolutely. Most certainly. And and Laura's smart to do that, man. If you're the bigger guy, just listen. You know, I know it's kickboxing, but the little time you get like that, where yes. you can make the guy wear your weight, the, I think that'll pay dividends. So in this kickboxing match, we haven't seen trips. Are we not going to see trips? Is that outside of the rule set? Yeah, so I, I don't think we have, obviously outside of MMA, I don't think we have any. Look, Matt Valencia is the only Muay Thai bout tonight, I believe, and that's no elbow. So we might see trips then and in the MMA, but for these Dutch kickboxing rules, it's it's all up top. Oh. oh. Well, that's a back and forth brawl. I mean, two fights tonight, man, have just been absolute bangers. I like this, dude. We get, we, we get the fighters coming around to us, and uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just a little wink and a little nod. These really are the best seats in the house. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I tell you, I've had the opportunity to go to like uh, a couple of the big UFC events, and just being at a small regional event where you're right there, so close to the action, it's such a different energy. Oh, no, absolutely. And even in the Newburg Armor, I mean, this place is fantastic. It's almost like it's suited for, for small amateur fights. Yeah, well, it's interesting that for this event, the past two events we've done here, we're only a quarter of the room. And now here we are in the center, making the event even bigger. All righty, let's throw it over to Steve Mason in the cage. Fighters, please come to the center of the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your winner, fighting out of the blue corner. John, John Lee, Lord. All right. Interesting decision. What do you think about that? I mean, we could be unbiased, right? Or we could be biased, excuse me. So John Lord, Lord took that decision? Lord took that decision. You know, I would say that, you know, I, I like it. He, I saw the other day on a UFC fight that it wasn't just the, the hits they were landing or the, the strikes, but there was also a, uh, an account for significant strikes. And actually, it was the Sugar yeah. Sean fight yeah. against Peter Young, Peter Peter Young. Young. Yep. That's what a lot of people believe won in that fight. And if you look at it that way, yeah, sure. Lore was snapping the head back of Patson Cox. Like, there's no doubt about it. He was landing the heavier shots. Uh, but, I, you know, if you want to look at it through busyness, you could easily give that to Patson Cox as well. 